Hi, I'm Lisa and welcome back to my channel, The Southern Seamstress. And if you're new here, thanks so much for dropping by. In my videos, I like to share whatever I've been sewing lately. And in most of those videos, it's clothing. But from time to time, I like to do videos where I share items that I think would make great gifts. And if you like those kind of videos, I think you'll like the one today because it's part three of my gift ideas to start making now for Christmas. In today's video, I'm going to share about 12 different patterns. Now, a couple of the gift ideas, I have a couple of different versions that I'm going to show you. Um, you can choose which one you like the best. I would say among these gift ideas, they're all pretty quick sewing projects, except maybe the first two that I'm going to talk about. And they're not complicated patterns, but they have a few more steps than the other patterns. I know this video is probably going to be fairly long, so I'll try to remember to put timestamps down in the description of the video. So let's get started with item number one. Now in all my gift idea videos, I usually try to put in at least one cute tote bag and this video is no exception. So the first item is the Fabric Basket Tote by So Can She. I think this tote is a super cute pattern. The finished dimensions are 16 inches wide by 11 inches tall, so quite a roomy tote. The tote can be closed with a zipper or by a snap, and it has two interior pockets. It has some really cute details to it. The center panel is quilted, and on each side of the center panel, it has piping, and it looks like around the top, it has a bias binding. Now, one thing I really like about this tote are the cute fabric handles. Now, she has a couple of links um, on her blog that talk about how to do these special fabric handles. I haven't made the handles yet, but I think it's just some fabric and some stiff stabilizer. I think if you enjoy making these handles, then you could also uh, put those on other tote bag patterns. So that's the Fabric Basket Tote by So Can She. Now all these patterns are free to make. Some of them have optional PDF files that you can purchase if you want. The, like the blog instructions uh, in a nice, neat, printable version. But if the pattern has a template to uh, cut out, the, that part is free. You don't need to purchase anything. And several of these patterns are going to have videos to go along with them. So the next pattern I want to share is also by So Can She, and it is her Handy Purse Organizer. Now, I really wanted to get this made, uh, but I just didn't have the time. This is an organizer that you can put into a purse or a tote bag to help keep all your belongings organized. I didn't see where she had written finished dimensions, but looking at the pattern pieces, I would say it's about 11 inches wide by about seven and a half inches tall. So I think it would be small enough uh, to fit in most tote bags, unless they're just you know a really small tote and any large purses. The thing I like best about this tote uh, is that it has 13 pockets to keep all your items organized. It has six fabric pockets, six mesh pockets, and one interior zipper pocket. It's got bias binding that uh, trims out all the edges and you can either purchase that or make your own bias binding to coordinate with the other fabric that you're using. So I really do wanna make this organizer in the future, even though I think it would look really cute in coordinating bright prints like she has in her picture. I will probably make mine more neutral and lighter colors so that it will just kind of go with different uh, purses and totes better. So that's the Handy Purse Organizer by So Can She. So the next item is a reading pillow by Helen Harrison and her blog side is Crafty Sewing Sew. Now I found a lot of different um, reading pillow ideas on Pinterest, uh, but I wanted to choose one that had a ha little handle strap on top and that also had a pocket on the front. So this one has both of those two things. It's got a finished size of 16 by 16 inches, but you could easily adjust that size by making it bigger or small, smaller, depending on uh, the person you're giving it to. It has an envelope style back, so it's very easy to take on and off um, to wash it when it gets dirty. Now, one other pattern I saw, but it wasn't a free pattern, but they had put uh, piping along the outside edges, and that was really cute. 
and some of them I've seen put trim you know across the top of the pocket this pillow cover would be easy to personalize um, by embroidering like the pocket on the front when you give this gift you could also include a book or a magazine that you think they might like you could also make them a matching uh, bookmark so that's the reading pillow by crafty sewing so now the fourth item is also a good gift to give to anybody who loves reading and that is a book cover there are a lot of cute book covers out there on Pinterest and a lot of free patterns so the one I chose to share is by pin cut so now I can't remember if she gives complete written instructions but she has a how-to video uh, to make it and she gives dimensions for three different sizes a small medium large depending on what size of book you think the person usually reads now I have made one this is the large size but I did reduce the height and the width by half an inch. So I thought I'd make it a tad smaller, but I didn't want it as small as the medium. Now she just makes hers usually out of quilter's cotton, but you could use a lightweight canvas or a cotton twill. And she does uh, interface the body of the book cover. Now I don't think she interfaced her pocket. The pocket is just a rectangle that's folded over in half and then the, um, non-cut edge is top stitched and put on top and then all the uh, cut edges are hidden in the seam but I did put a layer a thin layer of interfacing in between the layers of this pocket just to make it a little stronger and I knew I was going to be putting a snap on it so this is my pocket now you could actually put a seam down here if you want to make a divided pocket. Most of her versions, she has an elastic loop on top and she usually uses like a ponytail holder, which this is. I just happened to have a lavender one that kind of matched the lavender uh, plants in this fabric. Now this fabric, and just in case you're wondering, is from Hobby Lobby. It's, uh, I think I got it the last time I went in there. Both solid, and this, this has got uh, succulents on it. So I thought that was really cute. Now you could put your button on either side, but I put it mine on the non-pocket side so that if I have something uh, sticking up here like a notebook, it won't get in the way of the button. So this finish size is probably about eight by 10 or eight and a half by 10 and a half. And it's just got really um, kind of a medium sized book in it, but it's got a lot of room. It's where my book comes on the side and on the top. Now this size is also large enough that you could get an iPad in it. Um, it's a little snug for mine because I have a case on my iPad. So I think this is a great gift idea. And like the reading pillow, you could always include a book. Uh, if you know what they like or if you don't know what they like to read but you know they like to journal you could um, put a little journal and a pen in it and of course you could always add a bookmark so that is the book sleeve by pen cut so now my next item is very similar and it is the ipad pouch case by sugar bee crafts now if i remember right i think this one has written instructions and it has a video now she doesn't give you uh, any set dimensions to cut out she goes through and shows you how to measure the book or the ipad that you want to put in the case and then she tells you how much extra to allow for height and width now in her pattern she's um, either using quilted fabric or quilting her own fabric so she is using some kind of uh, fusible fleece or batting uh, she's just giving it extra protection because she is calling it an ipad case now the fabric i chose to use is actually a recycled bed pillow sham so i have um, several couple of quilts of this blue and right now I'm using the quilts, but I'm not using the sham. So they're just been folded up and stuck in the linen closet. So I got one of them out and kind of ripped up the, you know, along the sides. And then I centered this pattern on the front. So uh, I didn't do this quilting. This was a recycled project. So this is on the front. And then I also used that quilting uh, for the back of the body of the case now the inside lining i used the back of the sham which was just this lightweight um, cotton fabric that matched the quilted fabric so that part is also recycled now for the outer fabric i used some that i got uh, from hobby lobby and i think it's really pretty it's got some flowers and butterflies 
and it uh, looks kind of antique kind of like this. And I actually had used some uh, fusible fleece and put quilting lines in this, but and I had the same fabric on both sides. And <laughs> while I was looking at it just now, I was thinking, where are my quilting lines? But I just realized I messed up and I put my quilted side on the inside. So I only quilted it to the fleece. I didn't quilt it to the lining piece of the pocket. So this side's not quilted. So I had put all these diamond quilting lines in it and now they're on the inside where you can't see them. So that's kind of disappointing. But anyway, it still looks almost the same. It would have been a little cuter if I had the quilted part on the outside. I guess that just proves that I shouldn't watch TV and sew at the same time. So uh, for my snap, I just used a plastic cam snap and I think it's gonna work okay. So I will probably use this uh, for my iPad when I travel. Now, I always have a case on my iPad. I don't like to just use it without the case because I'm always afraid I'm going to drop it. And it will fit in here. It would fit very easily uh, if it didn't have the case on it, but I, it is big enough to use with the case. It's just a little bit snug. So it is a little snug, uh, but you can get it uh, with the case on it. So I just put the button over here and it's also got a ponytail uh, elastic right here. And then I can put, you know, pencils or pens in this side. Now on her tutorial, she also does some that she uses two pockets on the front. So you could layer another shorter one uh, down here over this. Uh, I just did it this way so it wouldn't be quite as bulky as putting a whole nother layer. If I was putting another pocket on here or two, I probably just wouldn't quilt them. I would just maybe use some light interfacing. Uh, but not quilt it, not make it, not use the fleece uh, interfacing uh, so the seams wouldn't get so bulky. Also, I think it works better if you round your corners down here because if when you have the square corners, it's very hard to poke them out and make them look square. I think I sewed these square maybe, but they're, they look rounded. So that's the iPad pouch case by Sugar Bee Crafts. Now the next three patterns are similar but different and they are all for eyeglass cases. Now I've actually made all three of these so I can uh, show you what they look like. The first one is the Easy Padded Glasses Case by Life So Savory. This is a really simple little case to make. It has one pattern piece um, that you cut out the lining and the exterior and then you uh, use some fusible foam. And in the instructions, she has you make the fusible foam about a half inch smaller than the fabric pieces so that the foam will slip in between the two pieces after you've sewn the pieces together. I didn't have any fusible foam, but I had any soft and stable foam that I used and it worked really well. Since it wasn't fusible, I sprayed the foam with fabric adhesive before I um, put the fabric next to the foam. I already had the Sulky KK2000 spray that I use for uh, machine embroidery. Like if I want to float something on top of the hoop, I will spray uh, the stabilizer and then kind of uh, pat down the towel or whatever I'm going to be embroidering. So it, it works really well and it doesn't gum up your needle. This pattern only has like one little kind of fidgety uh, step and that's kind of the next to last step right before the snap uh, where you kind of have this sewed together except that this edge right here is open your lining and your exterior is open right across here so you've got your foam stuffed in and then you have to uh, top stitch this opening closed now mainly it was fidgety for me because I wasn't using it like on a free arm sewing machine where you can take like the part of your tabletop off. Uh, I've got my uh, embroidery unit tabletop attached to my machine. So that made it a little bit more difficult. I should have actually used this older uh, little machine that's behind me because it does have a free arm on it. So the next time I try it, um, I will definitely do that. And I think sewing across here will be much easier. But this is a cute little padded case. Uh, it's just flat across here, but I think it's big enough for like readers. 
I found an old pair of readers I had. I used to wear readers for a few years, and then I started wearing contacts, so I don't um, use readers anymore. But they fit in easily and with the snap closed. Now, if you had any like big bulky sunglasses, you might want to enlarge your pattern a little bit. So that's the Easy Padded Glasses Case by Life So Savory. So the next item is also an eyeglass case, and they call it a padded sunglasses case by Orange Betty. Now it's an Orange Betty pattern, but the blog post is called Bombshell Bling Blog. So this is a similar pattern. It's just a one piece pattern that's folded and you do the same thing. You cut out one piece from your exterior, your uh, lining, and then the foam plain foam or fusible foam. Now I really like this pattern because it's a little bit roomier. Now the top edge from here to here is a little bit wider than this going across so it makes it bulge out a little bit and gives your glasses more room. So on this one I just sewed the three layers uh, together, the, inner, the exterior and the lining um, with the right sides out with the foam in between and then I just basted it around really close to the edge. So then you're going to wrap all your edges of your seams with bias tape. So you're going to do this first and then you're going to fold it up, trim it even, and then you go from here across here, um, but you're going to leave some ends down here so that you can flip them under. And I would say the hardest part about this pattern uh, and I think it would get easier with practice. It's just trying to get this bias tape when you top stitch it to look the same on both sides. I had to redo some spots uh, a few times because I would have it on the edge here and then on the other side it may go off the edge or it may go too far in. Uh, now one thing she did that I did not do and I think Maybe I should do this uh, if I try it again. She sews the edge on the one side of the bias tape, and then when she's pressing it over, folding it over, she uses a glue stick. She just has a glue stick. I don't know if it's like a special fabric glue stick or if you can use any type of glue stick, but she puts a little glue under there, and then she says she presses it down in place, and it dries the glue. And I guess it just, you can kind of maybe get it more even like that and then stitch around. I think another thing that might help with this case is not to use a commercial bias tape. It calls for double folded bias tape. Now all the packages of my double bias tape that I had said extra wide and I don't really think it's the extra wide part here. I think it's the inside that's folded over is wider than regular bias tape. But I think it would look better if you made your own bias tape because she says you can use a 3 8 inch or a half inch and I think this is a half inch and I think it would just look a little better if the bias tape was not quite as wide. Uh, maybe a little more dainty looking because I think this just looks a little bit chunky uh, with this size of case. So I think if I make it again, I may make my own bias tape and you know make it a little bit narrower and also uh, maybe try that glue stick trick she said. So this case is a little more roomier. You could put a readers or just sunglasses in it um, but it does have a little bit more room than the first case. So that was the padded sunglass case by Orange Betty and the bombshell bling blog. Now a third option for an eyeglass case you could use if you didn't want to work with a fusible foam or you thought they might be a little bit too fiddly is a pattern that I've mentioned in the past and it is the Kim Clutch by I Think So. Now I've made some of these uh, little cases or pouches um, for my Operation Shoebox gifts because you can put pencils in here or you can put cards in here or just little toys. Now for the ones I've made in the past, I've used quilters cotton or this is like a lightweight canvas and I've just put a little lightweight interfacing. Now if I was going to make the case for glasses, I would probably instead of just regular interfacing, use the fleece interfacing, the fusible fleece. And that would give it a little more padding. But I think this would work great for glasses. It's definitely long enough 
these readers come up to about right here on here to about the snap. Now another thing I like about this case besides that it's really easy to make is that it has these little box pleats at the bottom corners that gives you just a little bit more dimension in the bag. So that's the Kim Clutch by I Think So. I'm trying not to get uh, too long-winded about each of these projects because today I actually have my three dogs and three extra dogs in the house. So I've got six dogs in the house. Um, three, the other three are from my two daughters' dogs that I'm babysitting or dog sitting. And they've been really good. I took them outside, you know, on their potty break before I started the video. And they're all taking naps. They've been so quiet. I haven't had any deliveries for them to start barking. So I'm hoping to get through the last four items before they wake up from their naps. One thing I wanted to say about the eyeglass cases is that I think they would be a good item to add to a book bag or a reading pillow if the person you were giving it to did use readers uh, to read. Because you know when I had readers, I had several different pairs because they're usually pretty inexpensive uh, if you get them like at Walmart. Uh, so if you made them a little matching eyeglass case, they could put a pair in there. Then they could just store those readers uh, in their reading pillow pocket or in their book sleeve pocket. Now my next item is something I think is very useful by both male, female, young or old, and that is some little cord keepers. Now there were several different versions out on Pinterest by, you know, different people, but the one I'm showing you today uh, is by Apple Green Cottage. She includes uh, several different sizes of templates you can print off in different shapes. She has these rectangle ones in about three or four different sizes. I think this is the smallest one. Now you have to have a really small cord. I can just barely get this around a phone charger. And if you had a very long phone charger, you'd need a bigger size. But this is the smallest one, and this is the largest one she has. Of course, you could easily make, um, make it any size you wanted. Now the longer one would be useful for, you know, a more thicker, bulkier cord. Maybe like to a laptop or your Instapot or something. She also has one that's a circle version. Now my circles look a little wonky. I never can get the edge where the opening is flipped in to look just like the rest. Usually I will just cheat, like when I made those uh, round coasters in one of my video, I will just split the underside with a seam down the middle and then turn it from there so that the seam around the uh, outside of the circle is all continuous. <laughs> but I didn't do it on these. So these are very simple. They're just uh, quilter's cotton on both sides. You can make them coordinating. You can, you know, make them the same fabric. And then I did put some lightweight interfacing inside because I was going to be using snaps. So you can make these look, you know, real feminine. You could um, put some little character fabric uh, for some kids. You can make them look more masculine. I have just this gray and black. And this one looks pretty masculine too. And I thought if you made the outside like a solid light color, like a white or cream or something, uh, if the person wanted to, they could take a Sharpie or a fabric marker and they could write on it what the cord's for. Uh, because I have so many little cords to so many different little gadgets that I can't always remember what they go to. So when I put my snaps on, I put them so that it would wrap around and snap like this because that's how I'd seen it in some of the photos but I noticed uh, when I was looking at her photo again that she has them where they go like this and it may be easier to put it on the cord if it's like this and you're not having to flip an end under but it really is just your personal preference so I did go and grab uh, the template so I could tell you what sizes they are if you don't have a printer that you can print them off uh, the small is a four inch by two inch, and she has the ends. You can make them square ends or slightly rounded. I made mine slightly rounded just because it's easier on the corners to poke out. And then her medium is five inches by two inches. Her large is seven inches by two and a half inches. 
and then she's just got a four inch circle. Now, if you have a really big cord and you want uh, a circle, of course you could just make a five inch circle, six inch circle. You could easily adjust, you know, all these templates to make them different sizes. But I think if you just want to give someone a small gift, a, a little set of these would be great. Or you could also use them for a stocking stuffer. I know I personally uh, can use a lot of cord keepers. So that was the cord keepers by Apple Green Cottage. Now, one thing I forgot to mention on these cord keepers, you could use the cam snaps like I have used, or you could use Velcro. Or if you don't have either of those, I've seen them where they have um, put a little elastic loop and a button on them. So like three different ways. It seems like um, when I haven't used cam snaps in a while and I'm using that little hand press that I always mess up a few and then I have to take them out, which is such a pain. So on some of these, I had to redo them. And I remember that Christine of Christine Sews A Lot uh, told me you could heat up the end of a fork like the tine of the fork in a flame and melt the inside of the snap and then it would release itself so i did try that um, so i have a gas stove top so i you know would heat it up and then i would melt it a little bit so i had to keep heating up a few times and that did work so thank you christine uh, that helped me get some of my snaps out and while I was using the fork, I was thinking, wouldn't it be nice if you had a sharp pointed metal object that stayed heated and you didn't have to keep putting it in the flame? And then I remembered I had the perfect tool for this. Several years ago, I went through a crafting phase where I thought I was going to make my own stencils. I can't remember what I wanted to make them for. But because of that, I had bought a stencil burner. And this is what it looks like. Now, it's been years since I made any my own stencils. But I've kept this, and it's just a little metal hook. But you plug it in, and it gets extremely hot. And this worked great for getting the snaps off. I just melted the inside of the snap. Now, you do have to be careful that you don't melt the plastic onto the uh, fabric, into the fabric. So just don't overdo it. But I know m most of you sewists, you probably don't have one of these. But just in case you do have a stencil burner, this does work well for uh, removing the plastic cam snaps that have messed up. Now I know they also make little gadgets to remove the cam snaps and that's what I really need to get that I don't have to. Uh, work with anything that could burn me. Now my next gift idea is also a pattern by Orange Betty and it is a matching key fob and card holder set. Now I think the set she has in the picture is just so cute and I really wanted to make this uh, for the video but I didn't have time to get any of the little metal clamps that go on the end of the fob. I know they sell them on Amazon and they also have some on the uh, CamSnap website. But I was going to wait and see when I go to Walmart next uh, if they have any in their little sewing section. I think this is a really convenient set to have uh, when you're out and about and you, you're somewhere shopping where you don't want to have to carry a purse or a bag. So this card case has just enough room to put your ID and a credit card or two in it. You could probably fold up a little bit of cash also and put in there. So I think this set would make a really cute gift. I know I wouldn't mind receiving it. So that was the matching key fob and card holder by Orange Betty from the Bombshell Bling blog. So I've only got two patterns left to talk about. And one of them is the Easy Tote Bag Pattern by Sewing Times. Now on Sewing Times website, they have the written instructions, but they also have a video tutorial that gives you step-by-step -step instructions. So I kind of read through the instructions and then I watched their video while I was making it and I would just stop and start the video. But what I liked best about this certain little tote bag is that it is made out of one continuous piece of fabric for the lining and the outside. So the lining and outside are going to be the same fabric. Of course you'll have a couple of other pieces of fabric cut for the handles. Now it looked like in her video, in her pictures, that she was using a canvas and she didn't use any interfacing. So that's what I used. I had some leftover canvas that I'd made a Christmas project out of a couple years ago. So I used it for this little tote. Now this tote is fairly small. It's only about 10 inches wide at the top and it's about eight inches uh, tall 
and then it has boxed corners that are about probably three inch bottom down here. But she shows you how to finish the edges and do the folds so that it turns into a little tote bag. And I love how the little bottom corners turn out. They're kind of like these little pointed triangles that come up and they're caught in the seam when you sew the seam up. So this basic tote has a little bit of folding and pressing and top stitching and then it has a little bit of seaming and then you get this cute little tote. Now, she doesn't show a pocket on hers, but I always like to add a little extra storage. So I made a little pocket for the front and then I made my straps out of the coordinating fabric also. So I think that's really cute. I think this is a great size for like a young child, but also you can use it as like a little reusable gift bag. If you're making them something else or giving them something else along with it, then you could just put it in the bag and then they'll be getting a cute tote as well as whatever you put in it. Now this bag could be enlarged easily by just adding more width to your pattern or and, and a little bit more height. So easily adjusted in size. But I thought that was really neat how it was made from one piece of fabric, uh, the body of it. So that's the easy tote bag by Sewing Times. So if you made it to the last pattern, thanks so much for sticking with me. This is pattern number 12. Now this is not a pattern that everyone will want to make, but I thought there may be some of you that have a small child or a grandchild that has an 18 inch doll that seems to be a very common size. I know that the American Girl doll that's really popular uh, is 18 inches tall. So this pattern is actually an accessory for the doll. So when I saw this pattern, I thought it would be perfect for anyone that has an 18 inch doll. And that is a cute little sleeping bag and pillow set by Melissa from Polka Dot Chair. I think by looking at her pictures that this little sleeping bag set is so cute. You can make it with all kinds of different cute little coordinating fabric. It has a zipper going up the side just like a real sleeping bag and she has step-by-step -step instructions in her tutorial. I'm sure you could even quilt your fabric or use quilted fabric uh, to make it a little more bulkier like a real sleeping bag. But I think any child that has one of these dolls would really uh, love to receive this set as a gift. So that wraps up this gift idea video. I hope you found it useful and that it'll help you with your Christmas sewing list. I probably won't get much sewing done in the next couple of weeks. My husband and I and our three dogs are planning a little RV trip um, that we're going to go on this coming week. We're going to go out west and stop at, I think, Tyler, Texas for a few days. And then we're going to go to Austin, Texas and stay at McKinney Falls State Park um, that's right outside of Austin. And then we'll come back, uh, stay one more night in Tyler and then head home. So I think we're going to be gone for about eight nights. Um, which is a rather a long trip for us because usually our RV trips are only two or three nights. So I can't get any sewing done while I'm gone. I have printed out several different uh, PDF patterns that I'm going to take and maybe get a couple of those taped together. So it'll probably be November before I'm back with another video. So if you enjoyed this video, I would love for you to give a thumbs up. So in the comments, I would love to hear which gift ideas you like the best and if you plan on making any of them. Also, if you're not subscribed already, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button. So until I see you in my next video, take care and happy sewing.